uh, dear Liz O'Reilly, who may be sharing. And I'm sharing with Chakta Ellis, August uh, Chakta Adams, 5, 2.5 and 2.5. Uh, Minister, as you know, and I've said this many times, I am a former trade union official. I'm also the daughter of a trade union official. I have been a trade unionist all of my life. I was very proud to stand on the picket line with nurses and midwives, and I stood there with them this morning in Beaumont, and they gave me a message. Well, they gave me a number of messages. They gave me a badge for you because they saw you didn't have it. It says safe staff, and I don't imagine you're opposed to that. That's what they're on the picket line for. You've seen the pictures of the nurses in Abu Dhabi, in Australia, right across the world. And what are they saying to you? They're saying, give us a reason to come home. They are appealing directly to you, Minister. They're saying, give them a reason to come home. Pay them decently. Stop educating our nurses and our midwives to work in health services elsewhere. Stop spending a fortune to supplement the understaffing by paying for agency every single day of the week. And that bill is right, and I think it's nearly the first issue I raised with you when I came into the doll, and I have continuously raised it because it is a waste of money to keep escalating the agency pay bill. Now, you ask, Minister, what can be done? And you put it to us on this side of the House. What would we do? Well, in case you don't have it, I have Phil Nihay's phone number in my phone. I will give it to you when this debate is over. You can pick up the phone and you can ring her and have a face-to-face -face conversation as to how it can be done. You want to know something else you can do? You can stop issuing press releases that are doing nothing but getting the backup of the men and women that are on the picket line. I think the word used by your boss was discourteous. He said it was discourteous to issue a press release of that nature and not to talk to them directly. You're dead right when you say it won't be solved here. It absolutely won't. Any dispute I ever had when I was, well, I say working, although I suppose I probably work now too, but when I was working in the union, any dispute I ever had was never going to be resolved in this place. And we know that there is a very sophisticated industrial relations machinery available. But there is no point in everyone sitting around a table looking at each other when the will is not there to resolve the dispute. You can send a signal now. You can send a signal to the third party machinery. You can send a signal to the nurses because they're here and they're watching and they're listening on their phones on the picket line and they want to hear what you have to say. And what do you say to them? Oh, you're terrible concerned about short staffing and, and you're terrible concerned about patient safety. Every day of the week, Minister, nurses and midwives are cancelling procedures. They are experts in it now. They pick up the phone and they say to people, there are not enough beds, there is not enough staff, and your procedure is cancelled. Every one of us know these people. They come to us, they're in our families. We know that they get their procedures cancelled every single day of the week. So your concern for patient safety in the context of a strike rings very, very hollow to the men and women who are on the picket lines at the moment because they are there for safe staffing. Give them a reason to stay. Give them a reason to come home. That's all they are saying. And yes, this dispute can be resolved within the confines of the Public Service Stability Agreement. Don't take my word for it. Talk to them directly and they will tell you how it can be done. They are out there for patients. They are out there for more staff. And Minister, I want to be very clear with you, and I, you'll hear it from everyone here today. All nurses and midwives, aren't they only marvellous? Aren't they only lovely? Sure, what would we do only for them? They are workers. They are workers on strike for decent wages. They believe their dispute can be resolved within the context of the Public Service Stability Agreement. So just listen to them. Don't take my word for it. Talk to them directly. Stop issuing offensive press releases and stop pretending that, you will, that you're offering them talks when you're saying to them, oh, come in, but we'll talk about anything except pay. That is an absolute insult. Pay has to be central to it. 
You didn't oppose the Sinn Féin motion that was passed in this House in April, and the very last line of it said, pay has to be central to the resolution of issues around recruitment and retention. We have a recruitment and retention crisis. You can add it to the list of the other crises and scandals and everything else, but you have an opportunity to do the right thing. It will not be resolved in here. Fine words from all of us will not resolve this industrial dispute. What will resolve is direct face-to-face -face negotiations, but the political will from the government has to be there to resolve this dispute. As I said, Minister, these are workers. This is an industrial dispute. They don't want a pat on the back. They want to be paid decent wages, and they want you to talk to them like the professionals that they are. Go on,